Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this Unturned Map Editor tutorial, we're going to be covering how to actually add effects to your map. Now, there's a couple ways to do this, and the first one has to do with in the normal editor, and it's actually pretty simple. So the main tool we're going to be using to do this is it's going to be in the Environments tab, and then it's going to be a node. And all you have to do is go down here in the bottom left, and keep clicking through here until you get to the Effect option. Now once you have the effect option selected, uh, whenever you click on the ground, you should create a sphere here, and we're not going to create one just now. I've actually got a few placed down already, and they've got a bunch of sounds in them. So the thing about creating effects inside the normal editor is you can only create sound effects. Now as you notice over here, we've got some that are actually visual, and those were created in the dev kit. So I will be going over how to do those afterwards. Alright, so let's start adding some sounds in here, and in order to start that, once again, all you have to do is click on the ground. Now there's a couple options options you can do with this. You can do sphere, box, and that's pretty much it. So if you do a box, you can customize the size of this box. You can do like whatever dimensions you want. And the only downside to doing this uh, in the normal editor is that when you do the height, you actually can't see how high it is. So supposedly it's four high, but there's no way to sort of see that because these red lines sort of stay the same height at all times. So this is going to work for us. And of course, once you have it selected, you can move it around by pressing the E key. So let's say that we don't want to do this with the box, let's say we want to do a sphere. There is a way to change the size with the sphere. We don't actually use the length, height, or width at all. What we use is the radius instead. And that's going to pretty much work how you expect it would. And of course it's a radius, so there's a circle that's sort of going over the top that you can't see. So besides that, controlling the size, shape, and where it's located, you also have this effect ID and no water and no lighting. Now you guys probably will be familiar with the no water and no lighting already. Uh, pretty much if you check no water, anything in this area, if there's a water volume or just the normal water, it'll just displace it and it won't be there. Also if you check the no lighting, I would do one at a time only, don't do both. The no lighting actually makes it so that when you go inside this area, it gets darker and darker. And lastly we have effect ID. Now what goes in the place of effect ID is specific uh, IDs that represent specific sounds. And I actually have a way to find those, so I'll go over that out at the end. Uh, for now I'm just going to show you, I've got one that I've got here already, and it's 146, and this is actually the waterfall sound. So now that we've got this effect ID in here, we should actually be able to hear it inside the editor. So as we go into this area, as you guys can hear, we've got the waterfall sound running in the background, and as soon as we leave it, it stops. Alright, so that's pretty much all you need to know about how to place them inside the normal editor. Um, let's preview some of the other sounds. So up here, we've got effect 122. This is the cave sounds that you may have heard in some caves. The only issue with this sound effect is that it doesn't happen very often. So we could sit in here pretty long and potentially not hear anything. So let's move on to the next one. We've already done the waterfall sound. That's effect ID of 148 or 146, my bad. Next we've got th four of them that are pretty much all the same. I don't really, I can't really tell any difference between them. We've got 125, 131, 133, and 135. And they all sound the same. And pretty much they sound like ghost sounds, it's sort of how it's been described to me. And it would be in something else that maybe you could have in a cave or just in a creepy area of your map. And as you guys can see, they all sound pretty much the same. Lastly, we've got a bit more of an interesting one. We've got effect ID of 127, and this is actually an electricity sound. So I think this one's used by the electricity boss zombie. Um, I've not actually seen that one in game, but you could also use it throughout your map as some sort of environmental effect, such as if maybe some electricity is messing up in a certain area of your map. All right, so let's say you want to find some of these effects on your own. I do have a way to do that but it has to do with going through the file system so I don't know how comfortable you guys are with doing that but if you want to find some extra noises you can find them there so first of all you gotta to navigate to your unturned folder then you've gotta to go to bundles and then you gotta to go to the effects folder now anything inside there is technically an effect and so what you have to do then is go into there and go into the folders themselves and open up the name of the, th the effect dot dat and then look at it with your notepad plus plus or notepad and then whatever ID it has you can put it in there so that will not work for all things but there are some other effects in there that you guys can experiment with that you could potentially use 
you know, with other parts of your map. All right, so let's move on to actually placing down effects in the dev kit because there's obviously a lot more we can do there. All right, guys, so here we are in the dev kit, and obviously, if you guys are not familiar with this, I would definitely check out the dev kit videos I made before. Those will help you get a lot more comfortable in this sort of environment because it is quite different from the normal editor. So anyway, uh, we're going to need two things right now. So first of all, we're going to need to go to the selection tool. This is how we're actually going to be able to move around these uh, effect boxes. And we're also going to need, I think it's the type browser. And then if you go in here, yeah. So we're going to be using the effect volume and the ambience volume. Now, the ambience volume is used for sound effects. So let's say you want to make these similar sound effects that we made before, except you want to make them in the dev kit. You can do that. And that's what this is right here. As you notice, it's a blue color, just like these ones. And then the normal effect volumes are just white. So this is the ambience volume for 146. If you guys recognize that ID, that's the waterfall sound. And once we go inside here, you can tell that we've got the waterfall sound and it's just in the background. So that's all fine and good. And pretty much how you place those is first of all, click on here, then click on the ambience volume, then click back in here and then press E. That's the best way I've found for placing these down consistently. If you don't do it in that exact order, you may or may not be able to place it down. Of course, all we have to do to, you know, rearrange the size for this is just make it larger, smaller, whatnot, and then we can move it around using, you know, any of the movement tools. Now, if it, we don't have an ID value in here, it's not going to do anything for us, and, you know, that's to be expected. There's also some other things in here, can rain, can snow, override fog, no lighting, no water, and these do various things. So, first of all, I'm not really going to get into the fog stuff. Also, you've got no water, no lighting. Those work like the ones in the normal editor. If you press no water, it'll pretty much displace any water that's supposed to be there. If you do no lighting, it'll displace any of the light. So, once you go inside there, it'll become darker and pitch black eventually. Also, can rain, can snow. That is, if you do have rain that happens, the rain particles and the snow particles will be in there. If you uncheck those, they won't be able to go into that area. So of course those don't matter as much because we're focusing on sound, but those could be helpful as well depending on what you're trying to do. So let's make this actually have a sound in it, and we're not going to do the same sound as we did before. We're going to do the electric boss sound or the electricity sound, and that's ID 127. Now once we go into this area, as you guys can hear, we've got the repeating sound of just the electricity. Now, sadly, I don't have a way to actually make it not repeat or to sort of vary at all, so that's going to be sort of an issue with the way the game's set up. There's nothing you can really change about that. But just in case you guys want to do the normal sounds in the dev kit, that would be how you do it. All right, so let's move on to some of the cooler effects, and that's going to be the ones that actually have the visible particles with them. So first of all, the way you place them down is very similar to how we place down the ambience volume. All you have to do is click here, click on the effect volume, click back in the screen and then press E and you should be able to place one down. Now of course you've got to have the selection tool selected and that'll allow us to move it around, scale it, and completely do a lot of stuff with this just by moving it around throughout the workspace. Now in the side it actually looks a little bit different from the ambience volume. We've got ID, emission, audio range, uh, position rotation scale. Now the position rotation scale is all controlled by the selection tool as you can see it's moving and changing based on you know how I manipulate it. Also we can do rotation in here if you want to do that and that changes it as well. What we really want to use is the ID value. Now the sad thing is there's no documentation on what ID values create what particle effects. So as a map maker you gotta just store this somewhere where you can find it and I've got a few pre-made ones that I've been able to find. Now something you can do to try to find these ID values is just start from zero and just keep adding one. So you could go zero, one, two, three, four, and I have done this up to about 50 or 60, and there's quite a few in there that could be potentially helpful and are very interesting. But now I'm gonna show you only the most helpful ones and only the most interesting ones, which are these ones here. So all you have to do to add uh, the effect in there is just put a valid ID, and let's say I want to have a fire particle. That's the ID 139. As soon as I put it in there, you guys will notice we've got some fire particles starting to appear here. And as you notice, they will actually go over the top of this effect volume. They're not contained within there, but they do only spawn inside there. Now let's say we want to actually change some things a little bit. Let's say we've got to have the emission amount that it actually controls how many particles spawn at a time. So if we put it to two, that will actually double the amount of particles that actually spawn inside of this effect volume. 
we can put it to like 20 and that'll greatly infect it as you guys can see you can mess around with this a ton and you know that's gonna be up to you as a map maker on what you want to do you can also put it into less than one you know point one will work and it'll just spawn very very slowly and not many at a time as well now as you guys may have guessed the audio range actually has to do with audio that is put out by these types of effects um, that's not really used as much with the effect volumes as much as maybe with the ambience volumes but sadly with the ambience volumes there's no controller for that so some of these effects do put off sound but none of the main ones or the ones I'm going to show you today actually do put off any sound so that's going to be something you're going to have to experiment with yourself and overall that's pretty much how you add in an effect volume so let's start working with and looking at some of the other popular ones so first of all we've got 139 that's the one for the fire volume we just went over that we also have 120. This is the one for an airdrop volume. And as you guys can see, um, actually if we do 121, it's pretty interesting. That's the, the effect that actually happens when you kill the spitter zombie. So if we put it back to 120, we should see the airdrop particles start appearing. Now the thing about these, the reason I had to change the number is that uh, it does eventually time out. This one doesn't last forever and it will eventually stop creating these particles. So that's something to keep in mind as a map maker. As soon as it's spawned in, whenever the player gets close enough, they will eventually disappear. All right, so that's 120. And obviously we can change the emission amount and make it a lot more particles in there. As you can see, there's a lot more happening. We can also lower it as well. And that creates various different effects. All right, so moving on to the next one, and that would be, uh, let's start with this one, 140. And that is the waterfall effect that is actually like a really good waterfall effect. So this is the water particles that are just falling straight down. As you guys can notice, they spawn within this area, and they actually fall out the bottom of this volume. So if you want to have, you know, just a small layer of it at the top of your waterfall, that just sort of provides all the water particles for down below, that would completely work. Once again, we've got the emission type, and if we add more to that, it makes it thicker. As you guys can see, there's a lot more particles. We can also lower it as well and make it a lot less particles. Now, there's a couple more that are related to that. We've got 141. That's actually this sort of foam, sort of mist type particle. Um, that's also used with waterfalls. You can do the emission stuff with that as well. Then we also have 142. That's more of the water sort of splashing off of something, maybe a surface or maybe other water. And then lastly, we've got the dead zone effect, which is 2000. Now, I'm not sure why there's such a gap there. I'm wondering if maybe there is effect IDs, you know, between 2000 and 0. There might be. That would be something for you guys to experiment with, because I really don't have the time to go through each one of those and see what it does. Also, if you guys do find some cool effect IDs in here, um, please let me know in the comments because you know you can just share that around and that'll really help the map making community overall so that's pretty much how to do the effect volumes inside the editor obviously you can do the sound ones and the ones that actually have a video effect to them and that's gonna pretty much conclude it for this video one last thing I do want to mention um, something you guys may have noticed is that we have this other effect here sort of on the ground this is an actual object so if we go back into the normal editor and go into here, we can actually see the name of this object if we go into the objects here. And the name of this object is waterfall number one. And this is an object, this is nothing special. And you can just pretty much put it against the surface and it'll make it look like water sort of falling down that surface. This is an alternate way of doing a waterfall. As you guys might be able to see here against this airdrop box here, we do have this waterfall particle effect going across here as well. So if you guys want to use this in your maps, that's an alternate way of doing it. Obviously, using these dev kit versions are a lot nicer, but you could use both of them at the same time, and it could create a pretty nice effect. So anyway, guys, hopefully this is all the information you need to get some effects into your map. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe if you want to see some more.